Hi everybody, instead of going going live with the video, I thought I'd just post this uh, video up um, for for tonight for our Bible study. Um, there just some thoughts that the Lord has just laid on my heart and a couple of scriptures that um, we can just share together. Uh, but really just the, the, the thrust of what's on my heart is, is this, that um, we, we are receiving much um, and um, for, for the Queensborough Fellowship, we, we're receiving lots of messages on our on our group um, and encouragements um, from God's word and not only just during during this period but you know throughout the the weeks months years we've received much from the Lord we've, we've been taught so much and and from God's word we have uh, so much has been imparted to us you know we we've got such this, this glorious truth that that we we have um, and and the 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 faith that uh, was once delivered unto the saints and we have that and the Bible tells us to contend for the faith um, which was once delivered to the saints and you know we need to be those who as the scripture says we are rightly dividing the word of truth um, and so we receive and 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 so glorious to 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 the things that have been shared on our on our group and the things that have been shared on phone calls and and being able to chat and and really the, the challenge of my heart is this that um that the that the word of God, the that which we have received, has an effect in our lives. Um, and I'm not just saying now um, I receive now and it affects me tomorrow. But I, I'm just saying that that of all that which we have received, how has it changed your life? How how has God's word uh, impacted your life? And when I say your life, I mean your your thinking, your your um your your persuasions your your um you know the, the the fear that that may grip your heart um your decisions that you make um your habits that you have and in all these things is god's word doing the work in your heart and in your life um that that changes you so that it there, there is a there is a um there is a clear indication that something has changed you know that's the glorious thing about god's word and we'll read a few scriptures is that we, we're not just hearing we, we don't just come and when we when we share god's word and when we read god's word we, we're not just um receiving some bit of information we're not just um gathering thoughts together that we can piece together and have a nice story or create a moral that we can live by you see god's word is not just um, thoughts that influence our decisions but God's word who is the Lord Jesus we're going to read in some verses comes and accomplishes what is on God's heart he I say he because Jesus is the word of God in in being found in God's word there, there are things that 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 it doesn't just address issues but but in fact gives us the uh, ability and and has the ability to to change our lives um, supernaturally, spiritually, um, and, not, and so it's not just a case of influencing our thoughts, but God's word being powerful and, and alive is able to do that. And so just the first verse that I would like us to turn to is found in Hebrews chapter 1, and in verse 1 it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And so if we just stop there for a second, we see the writer of Hebrews says, God spoke. Um, and we read in the Old Testament, we see how God spoke. We see that he spoke through prophets. And we see that that the prophets were moved as they heard God speak to them and as they received the message from God and imparted it to, to people. You, I mean, you go read some of those Old Testament prophets and you see the impact of, of God speaking, what it had on their lives. And you see the impact on what it had on the people who heard what the prophets had to say because he was speaking on behalf of God. You know, we, we see often people responding to, to what the prophets had to say in the Old Testament, but then we also see people totally rejecting what God had to say through those prophets. You go read the book of Jeremiah and you know, poor guy, he, he spoke and he, he, there was no real response to, to the things that he said yet. 
he still said, your word is like a fire burning in my bones. You know, at first he said, Lord, I'm tired. I'm not going to speak anymore. I I've had enough. But he says God's word was like a fire inside of his body, inside of his bones. And he couldn't help but speak um, the things of the Lord. And so God spoke. He, he has always had a message. He has always had something to say. And he says it was in at sundry times and it was in diverse manners. And so there wasn't this constant flow of God speaking, but there was it was erratic. He spoke in times, uh, sundry times, which means, you know, at different ways and in diverse manners. You just go and see how the Lord spoke in those in those times. But it says in these days and it's the days that we are living in today where God has spoken to us by his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it says there, who is appointed heir of all things, um, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory. And so Jesus, the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. And it's just part of that verse that really so gripped my heart. Jesus being the express, the very, the very image of God, the, the image of his person. The, the expression of his character and who he is and upholding all things by the word of his power. And you'll notice that it doesn't just say he upholds things by the power of his word, but in fact, it's the word of his power. And so from his power, uh, um, the word comes and upholds all things. When he had himself purged our sins, Lord Jesus, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty of on how and so we we see god god spoke in the old testament by the prophets but in these days the scripture says he has spoken to us by his son you know we go back and see in the old testament and we go read genesis right in the beginning where it says there um genesis 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep the spirit of the, and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and god said let there be light and there was light and you go read um through those few for, uh, chapters of genesis and you you see god creating by speaking the word um and it says right it, it, that it was the word let there be he spoke and it was done um, and we go then to John chapter 1, again referring to the beginning, where it says in verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word. So um, when when we read about the fact that um, in, when we read in Hebrews, by whom also he made the worlds, speaking to us by his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, by him he made the worlds. And here it says, in the beginning was the Word. And so the Word being the Lord Jesus Christ. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And so making reference to right in the beginning, where God said, let there be light, and then there was light, and the light shone, the darkness went away, the, 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 the darkness that says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And I was just so encouraged by this, by the word of God, light shines. And you know, when we speak and we hear the word of God, it is a light that is able to shine into the darkest part of our hearts. And I don't know if, if there are folk listening that have that 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 this sounds like your heart without form and void and darkness is upon the face of the deep. You know, when when you when you hear those things, all you 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 think about is you think of darkness and it's um, fear and and being gripped and being held and not knowing freedom, not knowing rest. But when God speaks and says let there be light there is light and the light dispels the darkness now it makes reference to the very fact that this light it is the lord jesus christ and it says in verse 6 there was a man sent from god and it speaks about john and that he was being witness of of this light the true light the lord jesus christ 
um, it says here in verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, there's a few key words here, and I pray that God will just minister to these things to your heart as we as we continue with this. But it's believing and that power um, to become the sons of God. Verse 13 says, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And here, a clear indication that this word is the Lord Jesus. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Lord Jesus come, made to, to be flesh. And, and here he is. Uh, uh, on the earth and we go read again in the book of John and in chapter 6 verse 62 the Lord Jesus speaking says what and if you shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profits nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and so the Lord Jesus now in speaking to his disciples he speaks about the fact that the words that he is saying they are not just, they're not just um, small talk. He's not just talking to them. He's not just conversing with them. He's not just um, filling the, the time by speaking. But in fact, he says, the words that I'm speaking to you, the very words that he says, they are spirit and they are life. And so the things that he says are those things that are spiritual. You know, we, we read here um, about the, the, uh, the spirit that quickens, makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The, the, the flesh, the, the, he says, fleshly talk and, and, and those things, it profits nothing. I mean, we, we, I'm sure we, we are hearing a lot of fleshly talk around, around and, and, and the, the messages that we receive and the, the things that people are talking about. And there's, there's so much fear and there's so many things and it profits us nothing. But then you hear God speak by his word. And what comes? What, what, what is the result of God speaking? Well, he, he brings peace and, and he brings rest. He, he brings truth that we're able to see what is true and know him who is true. And so the, the flesh, it profits nothing. nothing. Nothing is fruitful. Nothing comes from the flesh. But Jesus is the words that he gives, the words that he speaks. They are spirit and they are life. And when, he's, when, he's, when we see the things of the Lord being of spirit, it, it speaks of those things that are, are spiritual. You know, our communication with God is not a fleshly one, but one the of the spirit the bible says that the spirit searches the the deep things of god that we, we we've heard and there was a message sent i think last week where we read in the book of corinthians where he says i has not seen ear has not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for them that love him but he has revealed them to us by his spirit and this is the wonderful thing is god's word comes and it's not again it's not just an intellectual thing it's not just something it's not it doesn't just go here and then in here and that makes a difference but god reveals his very heart and the very things that he wants to say by his spirit and that brings life jesus is the word that i speak unto you it's spirit and life but he says but there's some of you who don't believe for jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him and he said therefore i say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father you know what happened from that time many of his, his disciples went back back and walked no more with him then jesus said unto the twelve will you also go away you know something that really just pricked my heart about this account is that you know, when, when the hard sayings of the Lord Jesus come, how many of them actually just walked away? And you know, what is your relationship with the Lord Jesus like? And when those hard things come, will you also go away? You know, what was in the hearts of those disciples that were obviously walking with Jesus, but they, were they really followers? Were they really disciples? Were they really following the Lord Jesus? Well, obviously not because 
when the, the hard sayings came and when the things that really pricked their hearts came, they walked away. You know, Paul even said, I think it was to the Galatian church, he says, I have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. And, you know, the, the truth will often offend, which is why the Lord says in, in I think, the book of Ephesians to speak the truth in love. Um, you know, truth motivated by love brings true comfort. And he says here that the Lord Jesus turned to the, the twelve. He says, will you also go? away?" But then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where are we going to go? To whom? Thou hast the words of eternal life. There was an acknowledgement that the Lord Jesus, he wasn't just somebody who told the truth. But he said, he didn't say, where shall we go? Who else will tell us these things? Where else will we hear these things? He says, but to whom shall we go? Only you, Lord Jesus, only you are the source. You have the words of eternal life because the words that you're speaking, they are spirit and they are life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. And obviously those that had walked away and left, they were not persuaded that the Lord Jesus was in fact the Christ. The son of the living God. They were persuaded of the fact that God was speaking by his son. And 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 uh, we, we understand that now that the Lord Jesus in, in his word and the things that he says is not just thoughts, not just not just words, but the word of God. Now, Hebrews, if we go back to Hebrews and the writer of Hebrews says in chapter four, and what, what is so glorious about this, and you go read chapter four and, and everything that is said is in the context of, of being able to find God's rest and being able to find rest uh, and, and to know the rest of, of God. And it says in chapter four, verse 12 and 13, and I suppose these are well-known verses, but may the Lord just so minister them to our hearts. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart verse 13 says neither is there any is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And so in reading this, this verse, we, we see that God's word is alive. Quick, doesn't mean it's fast, but it's powerful. It's full of power. You know, when, when Paul, Paul speaks about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in Romans chapter 1, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. To, to all who believe. And and the, 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 the glorious thing is the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot be separated from the word of God. Because when you read in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when Paul speaks of the resurrection, he first preaches the gospel. He says that we believe that as it is, it is, as it is written, that the Lord Jesus died and that he was buried and that he rose again as it has been written. And so the, 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 the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God cannot be separated. And, and, and it is God's power. The, the gospel is God's power unto salvation to all who believe. And we can't preach the gospel without referring to God's precious word, because in God's word is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And the word of God is quick powerful alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword when you consider the sword um being two-edged you know it, it 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 is able to to cut and to 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 rightly and to divide to to come in and to separate it says even between the soul and spirit um and and here again speaking of the 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 soul being the the seat of our who we are the emotions and the, the our mind and our heart and the, the the person who we are and then the spirit of of what has happened in our life since the lord jesus has 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 come and we've been born again now the lord jesus is living in us and the word of god has actually come and able to to divide and to actually pierce that the joints and the marrow and even as a discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart you know, this is the glorious thing about God's word is that it's not limited. God's word is not limited to 
to just our understanding. God's word is not limited to what we can can interpret it to be. God's not God's word is not limited to the translation that is used in the sense that we can read this translation so that it's easier for us to understand. God's word is not limited to that. God's word comes and is able to pierce into our hearts um, and is able to dis discern. It's able to to expose. God's word is able to um, um, bring to light and, and, and understand the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. And you know what? We don't even understand the thoughts and intents of our own hearts sometimes. You know, we read in God's word and it says that the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? I'll tell you who can know it. God's word comes being quick and powerful and is able to come and penetrate our hearts. In John chapter 5, now back to the the book of John. Jesus addresses people and and here particularly addressing um, the, 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 the Jews here. He says, but I have a greater witness. You know, he was speaking about, about John the Baptist. And he says, but I have greater witness than that of John. This is John chapter 5, verse 36. For the works which the Father has given me to finish... The same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. The Lord Jesus really is just saying that whatever he does it is an expression of who God is. Because God has sent him. God sent his son. I mean, the, the well-known verse that we, 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 we read, especially in preaching the gospel, and when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now Jesus is declaring that very reality that that he has been sent by God and everything that he does is a witness that 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 God has sent him and that the father has given him work a work to finish. They bear witness of him. They speak of him that the father sent him. And it says in verse 37 and the father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape Amazing, because when Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says the word of God, <clears throat> in, in, in sorry, in, in Hebrews chapter one, where he says that um, God spoke um, by the prophets, and it says here that the Lord Jesus is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his, of his power. And here he says, well, you, he's specifically speaking to, to these people. Uh, he says, you haven't heard his voice. You haven't even seen his shape. You know what he was really saying? He says, you are not seeing who I am, Lord Jesus. You're not seeing him because if you had, had if you saw who the Lord Jesus really was, you would have known the, the father speaking. He says, and you have not his word abiding in you. You know why? He says, because whom he has sent, him ye believe not. And then he says, well, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. Amazing thing that the Lord Jesus says. He says, you're even searching the scriptures, but you're missing me. You see, the, the word of God, the word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word, the living word. He is quick and powerful. Uh, it's the Lord Jesus who, who is the word of God from the beginning. And he says, the Lord Jesus says, you won't come to me that you might have life. Now, the Lord Jesus doesn't, doesn't um, disregard the scriptures. He doesn't disregard the word. We don't disregard the Bible. We don't disregard the, the written word of God. Praise God for the written word, because in, in reading the written word and in, in, in reading the word, we're able to know him who is the word. And we are able to know those things which are spirit and which are life. We're able to know the quick and powerful and sharp two edged sword that is able to come and discern the intents and the thoughts of our of our of our hearts. And we're able the, God's word is able to expose not to bring us into condemnation, but so that we might have life. And the Lord Jesus says, you know what, you're looking and you're looking, but you're not actually seeing and you're not coming to me that you might have life. You know, the, the, the disciples that followed the Lord Jesus didn't just follow him to look. 
but followed him to listen to his word. He says here, I mean, in Jeremiah, now a prophet, speaking in, in verse in chapter 6, and I, I suppose these probably are verses that we know also, where the Lord, it says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. Stand ye in the ways and see. Allow your eyes to be opened and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. Now I refer to this rest back in, in Hebrews chapter 4, where we read about the word of God being quick and powerful. And, and, and the writer of Hebrews says that there remains a rest for the people of God, and that we labor into rest. And then he goes on and speaks about the word of God being quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. I tell you what, when when we when God's word comes into our lives, and when we receive God's word, and when his word is able to discern our thoughts and discern the intents of our hearts and, and, and come, his word comes, there is great rest when we receive his, his word. He said, if you walk therein, so there's a response to God's word. There is a response to this, this, this revelation. There is a response to this, um, what the Lord says um, and, and, and the revelation that takes place, what he reveals to us. There's a response to that. And it is to walk therein. And he says, you find rest for your souls. But you know what their response was to Jeremiah? They said, we will not walk therein. Also, I said a watchman over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of of their thoughts because they have not hearkened unto my words nor to my law but rejected it there is great great um uh, 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 there there is a great um consequence for not receiving god's word you know just just as 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 the lord just provokes my heart in sharing this you know we read in the book of hebrews where he says a heart and not your heart i mean you go, you look at israel and the Bible clearly says that the things that Israel went through in the wilderness, it was written for our example. You know, God, uh, uh, in, in, in so many ways, uh, um, gave to them his word because the Lord Jesus, it says he was the rock that followed them and gave them water. Um, he, there, there was that, that cloud that was with them by day and there was that fire by night. And and the the Lord Jesus, there were there were there were um, pictures of of who He was in in so many in so many respects that even the, the the serpent that was lifted up, and if they looked, you know, after they were bitten by those vipers, and if they looked upon that which was lifted up, they were they were healed. You know, again, just a, another picture of the Lord Jesus to look to the Lord Jesus. You know, the waters that they went to, more they, they were bitter, but then a tree fell in the water and then the waters were sweet for them to taste. You know, again, a picture of the Lord Jesus, a picture of the cross um, and turning bitter waters to sweet water. And, and in, in every way, God speaking to his people, d desiring to for his people to believe him. And the very fact that they didn't enter in into God's rest was because of their unbelief, because they didn't believe God at his word. And, and, and God didn't stop speaking to them. And he says, harden not your heart. Don't be like them. Don't harden your heart when God speaks. You know, sometimes God says things. Often the Lord will say things through people like me and people who share in God's word that we would, would automatically would put our backs up. But folk, I, I challenge you today. Allow the word of God that is sharp. That is quick, that is alive, and that is powerful. Allow that word to come into your heart. Allow that word to, to, to discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Allow the word to do the work that God intends for it to do. And so we, we carry on reading here. In John, back in John chapter 8, it says here in verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And so there is that, 
Don't harden your heart, but continue in his word. What does it mean to continue in his word? What does it mean? Does it mean to just read the Bible from cover to cover? Well, it's a good start. Does it mean to, to, to look at a good daily devotion and hopefully get something from, from somebody else's revelation? Well, I don't have a problem with daily devotions. That's nice. But continuing in his, in his word is so much more than just glibly reading. It's so much more than just trying to find an encouragement to get you through the day. But continuing in God's word is to take those things that God has expounded to us. And in and, and, and continuing in his word, he is speaking about the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the true gospel. The gospel that says that it's not by your works, but by the faith of the Son of God. It's not by... Um, the things that you have done but by his grace that you are saved because jesus died and was buried and rose again it's it's speaking continuing in his words speak about the foundation who is also the lord jesus christ the foundation the first principles of the doctrine of christ and those things which we believe and and continue in his word is 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 continuing in those things that god has revealed to us and those things that that aren't just they're not fashion fashionable things they're not they're not things that i mean when we when you think of the the doctrine of 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 head coverings and when we speak about breaking of bread and you know people are finding and trying to find ways to 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 work around it or to make it more palatable for this day and age folks let's not deviate from ways because the scripture clearly says and jeremiah wrote it that it's an old testament scripture but ever ever relevant for today stand in and ask for the old paths those things that are that are are are, are, are tried and tested you know the heart of david is so precious because even when king saul when he was about to go before but before goliath and king saul offered his armor david didn't say well i don't want it because you know it's too big for me and i'm just a little boy no that's not true saul wasn't stupid you know he wouldn't have he wouldn't have given this huge armor to a little boy obviously david wasn't a little boy he was obviously a bit bigger than than what we often make him out to be but that is irrelevant because he didn't say now well you know it's it's I don't like your armor. It's not the right color. It's not. It's not the right size. Um, it's. It, it. It's not. It's not what I need. No, he just says no. No, I don't need your armor because I haven't proved it. It's. It's. It's something that I don't need. It's. It, it hasn't been proven. You know what is so glorious? God's with the old ways. They are proven, and they are are, are, are steadfast. That's why we ask for the old ways, and that's what the Lord Jesus says. If you continue in my word, and you will know the truth. Continue in his word and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And they answered and said, well, we Abraham seed. How dare you? We were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou you shall be made free? You know, we Abraham seed. Of course we're free. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed, committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. And if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. He really was saying that, you know what? You don't have me. You're not believing me, the word, the son of God. You're not believing who I am. And in fact, you're not, you're not sons, you, you're servants. The servant of sin. He says, but if you found in the son, you shall be made free. He says, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. You know why? Because my word has no place in you. So there they were stuck in in their ways. And Jesus says, my word does, doesn't have its place in you. Folks, has God's word has it found place in you because as powerful and as quick and as sharp as god's word is we often shut it out we harden our hearts that's why the scripture tells us not to harden our hearts that's why he says in the day of provocation in the day he you know the bible says that it's limited to a certain day today if you hear his voice harden not his heart harden not your heart we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and just this is in the context of 
of um, the letter, you know, as, as a writer of, of as Paul writes Corinthians, and he says to the Corinthians, and he says that the the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Um, and he says just right at the end there in verse eighteen, he says, "But we all, with open face, beholding." as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so, you know, if, if, we, if we're applying the word as a letter, you know, as a set of, of rules or a set of things that we, we go through and check the boxes, oh, I'm doing this right, I'm doing that right, I'm, you know, it is never going to bring us to the place where we're actually changed. All we're doing is conforming to, to some kind of, mold or some kind of uh, uh, um, set of rules you know, it's, it's not God's desire he doesn't want you to to act like a Christian he doesn't want you to act like the Lord Jesus but he wants to change you you know you can you can mimic and you can mimic and do do whatever you want but that doesn't doesn't change who you are I mean you can run around on the on the roads well you can't now because you're at home but you can walk around on, on your driveway and go vroom, vroom, vroom. But that doesn't turn you into a car. It just you just mimicking what a car does. You know, you're not a car. And so the same thing is this. It's not about mimicking or, or, or trying to, to, to intellectually um, uh, uh, um, find uh, some understanding and then try and mimic that. No, when God's word comes and the spirit gives life, um, you are changed. And that's the wonderful thing. You know, the, you are changed by the Spirit of the Lord. Um, now, it's it's not a case of just listening. You, because we do listen and we hear what God has to say. But Matthew, Jesus speaks in, in the book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. And again, it's a well-known account. But he says here, many will say, in verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name we've done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And you know what? There's been questions about this before that I've heard. People said, well, were these people even doing them? And how could they have done those things? And, 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 prophesied in his name and cast out devils and how could you know what the bottom line is this the lord jesus did not know them now that's a sobering thought because you know what he says it will be in that day you know what that day is is that day when we stand before the lord and i pray that we won't get to that day without knowing today that we've hardened not our hearts because jesus just clearly says this look you did a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of things that, that mimicked what a Christian looked like. But you know what? I never knew you. You know, folks, it's through God's word that we're actually able to get to know him. He reveals himself to us. He reveals who he is. The expression we read in that first, we read in those first verses, it says, the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person by the, the word, God speaking to us by his son. He says, I never knew you. Carry on reading here. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In verse 24, there's a whoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house on the rock. And there we go. We know, we know that. It's, we hear, but for Lord Jesus to, to know him and to be known by him, it's not a case of just saying, oh, yes, I hear. Oh, that oh, what the Lord said was so lovely. Praise the Lord. You know what? It's good to hear, but not good enough. We need to be a doer of the things that God says. We need to be do a doer of the word, as James says, and we'll read that just a bit later. It, it's, it's not good enough to just hear, but there needs to be an outworking in our lives. You know, the Lord Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, this whole thing is really underpinned by the love that you have for the Lord Jesus. Do you love him? He loves you. Do you love him? The Bible says we love him because he first 
loved us. And so if you don't love him, maybe you don't understand and haven't come to grips with the love that God has for you. You know, at the end of this, where the Lord Jesus speaks about this wise man and the foolish man, they both heard, but only the wise man was the one who did what the Lord Jesus said. And when the, 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 the waves and the, the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon the house, you know, the wise man's house stood and the foolish man's house fell. It is, great was the fall thereof. You know, at the end of this, it says, when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You know why? Because he is the word of God. Because he is the very one who is able to 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 um, to divide. You know how many times did the Lord Jesus discern the thoughts of those that were around him and address them head on? You know, challenge them and says, "Why are you saying this in your heart?" You know what? He can do that to us today because there are many things that we say in our hearts. Allow the Word of God to prick our hearts, and not for us to just hear, but respond. And we know Romans chapter ten. We pour out to the Romans and he speaks about um, that we need to hear. And how are we going to hear unless we're told, unless, it's, unless we preach to you? Now there's going to be a preacher unless he's sent. Um, and it says here in verse 16 of Romans 10, it says, But all have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have you not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. The sound went forth, but who has believed our report? And you know, this is just the wonderful thing, hearing and doing God's word. The response to God's word is not motivated by our desire to do it. The response to God's word is not motivated by the moral aspect of it. You know, it's not just, that, well, I'm going to do what God says because it sounds right. You know, if we, if we have to judge and do what God says based upon what we feel is right and wrong, well, that's not right. That that's not the way it's done, because then it, it's it's every man for himself. Then it's everybody doing what they see is right in their own eyes. We read we read about that in the Old Testament. Every man did right what was in his own eyes, and that's not that's not what what God is desiring. You see, God's word, the response to God's word is not motivated by anything else but by faith. And, you know, faith actually comes by hearing the word of God and in, in hearing God's word and, and not hardening our hearts. But in fact, a response, a turn in our hearts as, as God, by his spirit and by the Holy Ghost, the, the, the Lord Jesus is revealed by God's word. We were able to respond to his word by faith, faith that he gives. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not our own ability to believe. It's not our own ability to, to comprehend or understand, but it's just the faith of Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And now we go read Hebrews chapter 11 and all of those men and women, all of the, they, they, they responded to what God said and it was, it was faith. It was by faith, Moses, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Sarah, by faith, Rahab, by faith, Gideon, by faith, by faith. You know, it was in, in the clear face of danger and the clear face of opposition and the clear face of 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 um, uh, 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 circumstances that were beyond their control. They believed God. You know what? They didn't just sit and enjoy the feeling of believing God, but they got up and they did what God had told them to do. Noah, I would have loved that. I, I think Alan made... Alan spoke about about Noah on on Sunday morning, and he made reference to it in our young adults meeting on Monday night um, that we had via um, an online online platform. It was really wonderful. But he said, "I would love to read Noah's journal, his diary." <laughs> it must have been pretty pretty interesting. But I would love to have seen that entry on the day where he said, "God has told me to build an ark." I don't know what an ark is. I have never floated upon the water before. God said it's going to rain. I don't know what rain is, but water is going to come out of the sky. Doesn't that sound weird? 
Now the moral and the intellectual scale of, of judging these things would say, yeah, look, Noah, mm, I don't think that uh, you are thinking soundly. I don't think that you quite have it. I think you may have, in fact, lost it. That, you know, that's, that's the fleshly response. But God's word was so real to Noah that, in fact, this, the faith that was, that was given to him, he moved with fear, the Bible said. You know what it means when he says he moved with fear? He believed what God said was true. He believed that rain would fall from the sky. He believed that he had to build this ark. And he knew God had given them the, the dimensions. God had given him how many windows, how many doors, how many levels, how big it needs to be. God told him all that needed to be done to do the work that he had told him to. And it was the faith that caused Noah to move with fear. And you can apply that, this wonderful principle to every single Old Testament character and every single Old Testament believer, I call them. You can apply that to every single one of them. The reason why they made the decisions that they made was not because they weighed it up in their minds and this is what made sense, but because they responded to God's word by faith. Folks, they died not having received the promise that we have received. They died believing. They died believing. And here we are living in a time where we, we don't just, we're not just looking for, for the hope of the Lord Jesus um, coming for the first time. We've already experienced the glorious rebirth and we've been born again. The spirit of Christ lives within me and within you. And here we have received the faith of Jesus Christ. We were able to hear God and believe him at his word. It's not up to your intellectual uh, capabilities to believe him. God even gives you the ability to believe him by faith. You, you know, we go read James and now James speaks about hearing and doing the word. And he says, you know, faith without works is dead. Ah, oh, we've got to just consider that for a, for a moment. You know, you say, yeah, you have faith. You know what? He'll, he, James says he will show you his faith by his works, and he, he's not he's not flipping the 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 the, um, the the doctrine of 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 faith around by saying that it is by works that you saved or it is no. What he's saying is that faith, in fact, motivates us to believe God, and in the the, the indication that we are believing God, and the indication that we have faith, is that it causes us to not just sit and enjoy what God is saying, but it moves us to respond to what God is saying. You know what? We're going through a stage with our son where we speak to him, and he's still young, he's 20 months. We speak to him, and you can see he hears us. But he's got to the age where he doesn't quite agree that what we're telling him to do is the thing that he should be doing. And so... He hears, but he just chooses to ignore and maybe even pretends that what we're saying is not really, really there. And we, we, we can hear God. But what is the clear indication that proves that we have heard what he says? It's the works. It's the response. In fact, if we are sitting and receiving God, receiving the word of God, and not responding to his word, well then what is the point? What is God's word actually doing in your life? James says in chapter 1 verse 22, he says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You know what? If we are just sitting and receiving and hearing, but not doing, we are deceiving our own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. For he beholds himself, and he goes his way, and straightway he forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein. And there's the key, folks. You know, we, we, we look into God's perfect law of liberty. And I, that's not just... Does a law of liberty sound like a set of rules or does it sound like that which brings us into a place of rest and freedom and life 
and, and being empowered to do what God tells us to do. That's the law of liberty. And so we look into God's word, into the law of liberty, because we understand when we read, we're not condemned, but we, we, we know the truth and the truth makes us free. He says you, you, you experience that glorious reality of looking into the law of liberty, but then you don't just look, you continue therein. Continue in my word, as the Lord Jesus said. And be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Again, if you're seeming to be religious, mimicking the 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 the, the, the religion, mimicking the religious <laughs> acts, he says it's it's vain. It doesn't mean anything. But pure religion. And undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You see, there is a reaction. There is a reaction to God's word. You know, pure religion. He just James just ends off by saying, look, it's not just about hearing and enjoying, but it's about continuing and responding to God's precious word. You know, um, Paul writes to the Colossian church and he tells them in chapter 3 to put on the new man in verse 10, um, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. And uh, that's glorious. You know, it renewed in the knowledge of the image of him that created him. Being found in the image of him. That's this new man. The new man is, is the character and the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, is now, um, he lives in us. And so now I'm not just mimicking, but I've put on the new man and this new man displays who Jesus is. And he, he, he says, where there is neither Greek or Jew, or circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. There's that new man. The new man, when we put him on, the new man displays the life. Of the Lord Jesus Christ and again just these these verses speak about a reaction a, a, a an effect in our lives of putting on this new man put on therefore the elect of God beloved holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long-suffering forbearing one another forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do you above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness let the peace of God rule in your hearts um, to the which cause you are called in one body and be thankful you see folks these verses and I encourage you to go read them these verses just just show that there's a reaction there's a there's an effect that takes place um, and here he says in verse 16 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom at teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord and whatsoever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father by him see there, there is an effect there is that which takes place there 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 is there's is something that takes place in the in the life of a christian that declares that god's word is doing something in their life folks are these things real in your life and and I, I i don't just want you to check yeah yeah that's right yes and this is right but but i pray that god would by his word so minister into your heart that you would you would know are these things in my life and if they're not lord please allow these things to be seen in my life are you forbearing one another forgiving one another are they bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness and long-suffering if there's a quarrel, a disagreement, or an argument, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. Charity being found in you, the bond of perfectness, the peace of God ruling in your hearts, being found in the body and being thankful for it. Because I pray God's word does the work in your life. So that there is a clear evidence that I have received God's word. I have believed. And, and because I've heard his word, I have faith to now do his word. And, and, and not just be a hearer, but a doer of the word of God. 
And I want to just end by reading this um, this um, chapter of Isaiah to you. And it's Isaiah 55. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter to you, but I just want us to, to read these few verses. <clears throat> In verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and as my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but waters the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Amen. I, I, pray, I pray that as you would hear these words and hear the word of God, that you would so respond. I'm not going to close in prayer, but I'm going to let you close in prayer for yourself and respond to the word of God as he is clearly speaking to us as his church. Amen.